Good morning, everyone. I'm sure most of you, like me, travel by airplane quite regularly to get to conferences or meetings. And when you do, you probably want that to cost as little as possible and also to harm the environment as little as possible, right? Well, to do that, we need to make sure the aircraft is as light as possible uh, because that means it will use less fuel. How do we make an aircraft as light as possible? One of the ways is by looking at how we join it together. Currently, we use rivets to do that. When we use rivets, we have to make holes in the structure. <coughs> we have to compensate for those holes by adding weights to other parts of the structure to reinforce it. But instead of using rivets, we could use ease of bonding, gluing, basically, to join the parts together. We avoid the holes, we get a nice smooth load transfer, to make much more efficient, much lighter structures. There's a problem, though. In an airplane, we have repeated loads, pulling that to go, pulling that to go, lots of times. And these loads can cause cracks to appear in the structure, in the, in the adhesive, and grow over time, each time there's a new load cycle. <coughs> so in order to be able to use adhesive safely, we need to be able to predict and understand how fast these cracks will grow. Well, it's not a new problem, of course. People have been working on it for about 50 years. What they found is, in a test, we could measure a parameter, or calculate a parameter called the straight energy release rate. We can measure the crack growth rate. If we plot these in a log log scale against each other, we find a correlation. So, problem solved, we all go home. <laughs> Unfortunately not. We see there are various factors, for example, temperature or the ratio of minimum to maximum stress. And if you change these factors, you find a different correlation. You see that on the graph here, for different ratios of stress, you get different lines. So if I want to build an airplane, if I want design allowables, I have to do a huge set of tests at each of these different R ratios makes it a very expensive and time-consuming process. So that's when we said, okay, let's take a step back. Let's think about the physics. What is actually going on here? What's going on in crack growth? To grow a crack, we need to put in energy. We need to split bonds between atoms. That takes energy. So in a test, if we can measure how much energy we're putting in, and we can, and if we can measure how much energy is being dissipated, and we can, why don't we try and correlate that to the crack growth rate? And indeed, you see, if you take the actual energy dissipation and correlate that with the crack growth rate, all the curves collapse. So instead of this huge matrix, we can just do one set of tests and characterize entire material behavior from that. My name is John Alan Pasco, and I'm going to ask you, it's 2015. Isn't it time to go back to the physics? <laughs>